every story appears ordinary until you see the core side of it. And what you're looking for is a story behind the news. We bring it to you from Lagos, the commercial capital of Nigeria. Giving you all sides and political stories around the clock. Every detail from the start line to the final whistle. Core TV News, expanding your view. News, I am Omotayo Alo. In our major stories tonight, President Mohammed Buhari assures Nigerians in India of government's total war against corruption. Also in this program, National Assembly to probe aviation contract as 64 billion Naira Abuja Airport runway comes under scrutiny. Nigeria makes final push against Boko Haram, rescues 338 hostages. And from outside Nigeria, United States Justice Department opens judicial inquiry into the arrest of a black high school student. Thank you for joining us tonight. Now the news in form. President Mohammed Buhari says that despite the fall in oil prices, his administration remains fully committed to maintaining macroeconomic stability and improving investor confidence in Nigeria. In an interactive session with chief executives of Indian companies today in New Delhi, President Buhari disclosed that with its abundance of human and material resources, the Nigerian economy does not have to suffer unduly for low oil prices. He however said what is required is the implementation of tight expenditure controls, effective fiscal and monetary policies including the husbandry of scarce resources which the introduction of the single treasury account has begun to address. President Buhari, however, urged the Indian CEOs to accept the changes in policy being introduced by his administration and observe all extant Nigerian laws in running their businesses in the country. President Mohammed Buhari has reaffirmed his administration's commitment to curbing corruption, plugging all loopholes in public sector accounting and deploying available resources for the good of all Nigerians. Addressing members of the Nigerian community in India, President Buhari disclosed that the recovery of stolen funds and persecution of persons indicted for corrupt practices will continue to be vigorously pursued. He said he expects the ongoing recoveries and persecutions to serve as a deterrent to all those who announced the ambition of seeking public office solely for legal personal gain. The president assured the Nigerian community that his administration will do its best to fix the economy and create jobs for the teeming population of Nigerian youth. The Senate is opposed to the 6 to 4 billion Naira contract for the construction of a second runway of the Namdi Azikwe International Airport, Abuja. The Senate described the contract sum as too high and huge. The, the federal government urged uh, that it should consider a slash in the proposed expenditure. This was on the basis of a motion sponsored by Senator Dino Melai, APC Kogi West, who argue that the amount is far more than what was spent on larger structures locally and in other parts of the world. of all and if we carry out comparative analysis of the cost of Jigawa Airport compared to this satanic figure of 63.3 then 
this Senate have no choice than to ask that while we need a second runway, it must be done within the provisions of the Public Procurement Act. Now that there is a change government and this contract has resurfaced in the same amount of money, that means the problem was not from the PDP. There must be some other people who are doing this and letting this uh, uh, contract tend to have a recurring life. At every government, it comes up with this outrageous figure. There's urgent need for the construction of a second runway at the Namdi Azikwe International Airport. Those in favor of prayer won't say aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. Meanwhile, the House of Representatives is to take a second look at the remodeling of key Nigerian airports carried out by the Jonathan administration. This follows claims by the American news network CNN that the Putakot Airport is the worst airport in the world. Representative Boniface Maregua raised the motion on the need to fast-track renovation of the airport, which end up triggering a floodgate of reaction from all the lawmakers. They argue that so much funds have been put into the airport would lead to effort to show for it. Jamil Afebwa reports. Airports all over the world are gateways to any nation. The need, therefore, to have standard rate arrival and departure areas are important. In a bid to enhance the efficiency and smooth operations of the airport chain in Nigeria, the administration of former President Goodluck Jonathan embarked on a renovation of key airports in the country, including the Port Harcourt Airport. But nothing seemed to have been done with the huge amount of money expended. The House needs debate sought to know where all the monies went to. Mr. Speaker, in the last five years, this House budgeted over 400 billion naira for the upgrade of this airport to comply or to be in line with the international best practices. And we have annual passenger rate of 15 million, out of which three out of these 15 million are international passports. And for every ticket for anybody coming into Nigeria or going out of Nigeria, pays $60 to, to these agencies. The motion agreed that the projected renovation work involved extensive expansion and modification of structures and construction of international terminals, all aimed at having the airport live up to its expected name. I feel it is very important we take this issue very seriously because even investors that want to come to our country will, will come through all these airports. And if they say our airports are not safe, then how do we attract investors into our country? Many other issues, including delays, missing property, and health issues, were raised during the arguments on the floor. The speaker, as you sit down even in the lobby to take your tea, you have some visitors at the airport, cockroaches and ants. Very, very embarrassing. And uh, we pay for these services, and yet they are not there for us. And as you come into the country, you are saddened by the fact that the escalators are always, you know, not functioning. And when you ask, because I try to ask, they tell you uh, it's power failure. Over $400 million, including about $1 billion from the Chinese government, has so far been expended on infrastructural and other improvements in the airport. The question now, can the investigation by the House reveal to Nigerians what happened to those monies? Jamil Afeg, Core TV News. The federal government has denied media reports that the chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, Ibrahim Lamade, is on the investigation of the allegations of diverting assets of one trillion naira. The Ministry of Justice said in a statement by its director, Press Charles. 
Wardo that news report of a probe of the allegations are misleading. It noted that the newspapers relied upon an acknowledgement of the petition against Lamadi to draw a conclusion on the alleged probe. The Justice Ministry explained that it had since forwarded the petition to the EFCC chairman for his response in line with the principles of fair hearing. It other that it is still awaiting Lamadi's response. Also in uh, uh, the news tonight, uh, we have that the chairman of Isin local government in Kwara State has been embroiled in corruption allegation from the legislative arm of the council for as he was allegedly suspended for three months by the lawmakers. However, the leadership of the All Progressive Congress in the Kwara South Zone seems to come to his rescue as it was cleared of any financial corruption, and the lawmakers also shoot their swords, blaming it on lead to misunderstanding. We'll take a break now, and we'll be back with more stories. Stay with us. It's a new dawn in Nigeria, and the mantra is change. The wind of change is blowing all over Nigeria and beckons to you. One sure way to respond is to perform your civic duty, pay your tax. With taxes, government generates revenue to fulfill its electoral promises. Ensure regular power supply, provide good security, standard education, medical care, true total change. Individuals and corporations enjoy specific benefits, rights and privileges for paying taxes and avoid the consequences and penalties of not paying. Oil revenue is no longer sufficient to bring desired change, but your tax can. It pays to pay your tax. A message from the Federal Inland Revenue Service. This is what the people are saying. You don't run a big economy with generator. They need to do more in terms of energy and power. Many things to do for this Nigeria. About lights, water and new TT. For Nigerians that are not gullible, we know that good laws are done nothing good for this country. We already won the election eh? convincingly. They talk to our husband that you should keep promise oh, about what you said oh, and because people are watching you, you know, another election is coming. Because so, some people were strong for your land. We'll be strong man. We don't die. This nation is moving forward. The best is gonna take place. The people giving voice to the voiceless. Welcome, and if you're just joining us, it's School TV Primetime News. Here's a quick reminder of our top stories. We told you earlier that President Muhammad Buhari assures Nigerians in India of government's total war against corruption. Also, that the National Assembly is to probe aviation contract as 64 billion Naira Abuja Airport runway comes under scrutiny. Nigeria makes final push against Boko Haram, rescues 338 hostages. For more of our news and information, visit our social media platform facebook.com forward slash core TV news, our Twitter handle at core TV news and G. You could get more on our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash core TV, liver space and news. The final set of ministerial nominees have appeared before the Senate, bringing to 36 the total number of those screened. The list of four include Aina Enelema, Adamo Adamo, Musa Belo, and Thony Awuka. Also on the list is Aisha Abubakar, who had the petition tabled against her, uh, withdrawn by Senator representing Sokoto Hist Ibrahim Gobert on behalf of all the senators from the state. Correspondent Basiaye reports that the Senate deferred confirmation to a later date. It is the final day of the screening exercise that lasted for three weeks. 
Eyinna Enemela had opened the floodgates and was followed by four others. But on the day, two of those lined up for screening had petitions against them, which had earlier been resolved. One of such was the former vice chancellor of Imo State University, who had been cleared by the Committee on Ethics, Privileges and Public Petitions several days before his appearance. I reduced courtism to its barest minimum in the university, and I had a wand that made me do it. I let the students know that if any student is associated in any manner or form with courtism, that student wasn't going to graduate in Imo State University. And the second was Aisha Abubakar from Sokoto State, who had a petition against her withdrawn a few hours before she was scheduled to appear before the Senate. In the end, the nominee was allowed to exit the chamber without taking any questions. We are a gender-sensitive uh, chamber, and the mood is that there are only six women amongst the 36 nominees. I wish to ask this distinguished Senate and Senator Gubil, who has been the who brought all the petitions and has withdrawn them, to kindly ask the Senate to allow her to take a bath. Thank you very much. Mohammed Ali Dume, I second the motion. Come and take a bath. But contrary to what transpired with the first set of nominees, the Senate adjourned at about 3.24 p.m. without any reference to confirmation of those screened. This effectively means that their confirmation is on hold. Basia Ye, Core TV News, Abuja. The Nigerian army says its troops have rescued about 338 people held by Boko Haram insurgent around the Zambisa forest. In a statement issued today by its acting director of public relations, Konel Sanusman, the army reveals that about 30 insurgents were killed during the operation. It explained that the operation was carried out by troops of 28 Tax Force Brigade deployed at Bita and Pringdang and suspected Boko Haram camps at Bola Jinlin and Manawashe villages along Bita and Dambo Road on Tuesday. The army other that the rescued persons include eight men, 138 females and 192 children who have since been evacuated to Mubi. Items recovered from the insurgent during the raid include one general purpose machine gun and two dan guns, 150 rounds of 7.62 millimeters ammunition, six boxes of 7.62 mm and three quart. The Nigerian Prison Service has a new cell and administrative building in Zaria. The structure was commissioned by Controller General Ezewa Ekpemendu. Speaking at the ceremony, the prison board said the new structures were built in spite of financial constraint. He added that despite the challenges, a lot of renovation work is taking place in prisons across the country. There are always plans to improve on our facilities and build new ones. Uh, but we are constrained for the moment by the present economic conditions in the country and all over the world anyway. It's not uh, limited to Nigeria. So uh, there are a lot of renovation works that we are carrying out in a number of places. And uh, I also hope that as uh, uh, soon as the Mr. President settles down, there are some other areas where we have uh, called on him and for which he's given attention. Invariably, we are going to have more facilities. A very good development indeed. And in Imo, Imo NSCDC under its new leadership celebrates their victories in combating crime in the state. Officers and men in their colorful uniform demonstrate with various salute at the very occasion. Proposed electricity tariff adequate power supply in any given country is the desire of its citizens. With the proposed increase in electricity tariff, experts are of the country opinion to the increase in tariff where citizens are yet to have adequate power supply. 
Our correspondent Neto Elaborate has details of the report on the proposed electricity tariff in Nigeria. Power challenge in Nigeria has been a major issue which raises concern as consumers bear the cost of inefficiency of the electricity company. The coordinator Electricity Consumer Protection Forum says the proposed increase in electricity tariff is a fraudulent act since there is no justification for the increase. That uh, the increase is a fraud and I see no reason, there's no justification, there's no investable justification for that increase and I believe that the federal government should rise up to the occasion and stop it forthwith. Apart from the fact that there is a court injunction on the implementation of that increase, that they, they, there should be no increase, that is, the status quo and bellum should be maintained. For his part, financial analyst affirms that the electricity industry needs privatization and investment to move forward, and that the masses does not need price increase for sustainable electricity supply. Fraud in the sense that uh, it negates everything we have as far as uh, the privatization pamphlet, the privatization law is concerned. Because the issue is that how many years have we unbundled the old PACN? And you're talking about increase. What is it that has changed in the electricity supply, in the whole electricity or energy chain? Nothing has changed, and you're talking about increase. I think that with the little I know about the privatization, program. We talk about investment. You have to invest it to the level that will be comfortable that people will have, will have going to have sustained electricity in Nigeria before you talk about price increase. It is hoped that the electricity company should endeavor to provide adequate services by providing uninterrupted power supply rather than increase the electricity tariff. What we should have happened, one of the simplest things that was not done is the issue of uh, providing prepaid meters. How many homes have been provided? That's the most simplest. Solution now is for the government of the day to first of all make a, an executive pronouncement to stop that increase forthwith. If Zamamadi refuses to obey the court injunction, let the federal government that employed and appointed him stop him from, to, from, from committing that arakiri because Nigerians will rise up against that increase at any time they try to. Reactions has continued to chill the just given verdict by tribunal over the Velto State election petition of Labour Party and All Progressive Congress, APC, against the People's Democratic Party, PDP. Deltans, however, are beginning to call for absolute unity in the state. Correspondent Ajibade Awofeso has details in this report. Following the judgment by the election tribunal who struck the petition of both Labour Party and APC against the governor of the state, Senator Ifanye Okoa, this appears to be the desire of Deltans. According to some of them, continuous mitigation will not help the state in any way. Uh, sad enough, Nigerian politicians are bad losers who don't accept defeat. Um, it's their constitutional right, of course, to go to the appeal. We're not saying they shouldn't. But um, looking at the or where the whole thing went at the tribunal. I personally think there's no need for that. We don't need to waste our resources, waste our time. They however call on all Dayton's in respective of their parties to join hands together in moving the state forward. Those of our brothers, who and the other diverse, who are calling on intimidation every day, they should join hands to the administration of the power, to move their past state forward. But that's the only way the state, there can be peace in the state, and that's the only way the state can move forward. Going to from one court to another can have the state. Some further reiterated their support for Governor Okoa, saying the victory is not only for the PDP alone, but for all the Deltons. Use the road. If the governor builds a school with the opposition not send their children to the school, if there is an hospital built by the governor with the opposition's children not go to that hospital, this for the whole entire state. The governor is not going to be a parochial governor. The governor is not going to be a one-sided governor. The governor is not going to be a PDP governor alone. He is going to serve the people of Delta State. With this, it is hope that the message of peace and unity will cut across the state to enhance development and progress. Ajibade Awofeso, Core TV News, Asaba. 
More reactions thrill the tribunal verdict on the governorship elections in some state. Some Lagos residents are of the opinion that the judgment is a good development to the nation. Others feel the judgment is biased. Well, actually, you know, we, we are in a country whereby um, before the law takes its course, it, um, it's a gradual process and, you know, the longevity is one of those things that affect, you know, the, 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 the final outcome of, about it. But lo and behold, let's, 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 ju let's just see what the whole thing is going to end up to be. But I just believe that um, the, 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 the justice should take its course the way it should be. I think it's a very good omen for this country and I will be glad if, if such a thing could be carried out also in every other state. Baba is there because somebody puts him there. A lot of people voted him in. Yes, take for instance about the Lagos state governor. He never won the election. We all know, we never vote for somebody. We voted for a person. We voted for Jimmy Agbaje, which is right, which everybody knows. But why is it that he's denial of his right? This is what is going on in this country. But, but that case is still... Uh, the no, no, he's not going to win out. Come on, man. They are, they are ruling it. So this is politics. Akwai Bontu is a PDP state. If they conduct the, PDP, the election in Akwai Bon, 10 times, PDP will still win. Because APC has no structures in Akwai Bon states. In recent times, traffic situation in Lagos State has heightened as many residents run late for their daily activities owing to the large number of cars plying the road at the same time. This has become worrisome as residents lament the persistent situation. I've not abated, okay. but uh, with the new rules being passed by Governor Ambody, uh, and the meeting he had with uh, LASMA and all these uh, traffic uh, people, Hopefully, hopefully, in a couple of weeks, we we'll see how it goes. Traffic in the street of Lagos, we all know, is an hectic thing, and most of us are part of it because this is a day-to-day -day thing. And well, what I would just say is, we ourselves, we are still the people that are going to like put it in order because we can't now call the government on it now. Traffic is rather much because I don't know, like, to see if the last month um, and the traffic officials they've gone on recess, so it's been crazy. When the governor came in, the traffic was so much, and it's been, I've been seeing in the media that he's trying all he could do with the agencies and so and so to make the some roads good roads and some traffic congestion like uh, the tankers, drivers, the trailers, whatsoever. We will be back with business, foreign and sports stories after the break. It's a new dawn in Nigeria and the mantra is change. The wind of change is blowing all over Nigeria and beckons to you. One sure way to respond is to perform your civic duty, pay your tax. With taxes, government generates revenue to fulfill its electoral promises. And your regular power supply provide good security, standard education, medical care, true total change. Individuals and corporations enjoy specific benefits, rights and privileges for paying taxes and avoid the consequences and penalties of not paying. Oil revenue is no longer sufficient to bring desired change, but your tax can. It pays to pay your tax. A message from the Federal Inland Revenue Service. You can now watch Call TV News live from anywhere in the world on our website www.calltvnews.com. Click on Live TV on our website and watch us live. And welcome to Call TV Primetime News. To follow us on Twitter, click on Twitter icon on our website. And Facebook, click on the Facebook and YouTube to see all our previous news production. You can also watch us live on YouTube. Click Call TV, leave a space, then news. Call TV News, a 24-hour news station. In business, the African Development Bank, AFDB, 
says the forthcoming Africa Economy Conference to be hosted by the Democratic Republic of Congo in November will address poverty and inequality. In a statement on its website on Wednesday, AFDB said the theme for the 2015 AEC is addressing poverty and inequality in the post-2015 development agenda. It revealed that the conference, which will hold from November 2 to November 4, would provide an opportunity to assess the impact of current growth strategies on poverty, inequality and human development in Africa. The statement said AEC 2015 will contribute to the policy dialogue and advocacy on inclusive growth by presenting the latest empirical evidence on poverty and inequalities in Africa. And on the foreign scene, the incumbent president of Ivory Coast, Al San Otara, has been re-elected in a vote seen as the key to cement the West African country's beat to overcome a history of electoral violence. The 73-year-old won a second term outright by garnering almost 84% of ballots in the first round of polls. Otara, who had been widely tipped to win, has been credited with reviving the country's war scarred economy, but also accused of creeping authoritarianism. His main challenger, ex-Prime Minister Pascal Afi Ugosen, who ran on behalf of the Ivorian Popular Front, the party of former leader Laurent Bago, garnered just 9.28% of ballots. President of the United States of America, Barack Obama, addressed a gathering of more than 10,000 police chiefs all over the world at the Second General Assembly of the International Association of Chiefs of Police held at the Marrock Place West Convention Center, Chicago, Illinois, USA. The 2015 IACP convention titled Give Yourself an Edge was addressed by various scholars in different fields of security, particularly policing, including the USA President, uh, President Barack Obama, who centered a speech on 21st century policing with emphasis on proactive and community-based policing. Obama highlighted provisions of adequate resources needed to operate improved criminal justice system and reducing risk on police operatives as the key factors to having better policing in the 21st century policing all over the world. The FBI and the U.S. Justice Department have opened investigation into the violent arrest of a black female high school student by a white police officer which went viral and sparked outrage. FBI Special Agent David Themis, who disclosed this, said the agencies have opened a civil rights investigation into the circumstances surrounding the arrest of a student at a high school in South Carolina. Themis disclosed that the FBI will collect all available facts and evidence in order to determine whether a federal law was violated. The United States is considering escalating its military campaign against the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant ISIS group in Iraq and Syria. U.S. Defense Secretary Ashton Carter, while outlining the strategy shift, said the new policy would mean additional airstrikes and even direct action on the ground. Carter said the coalition would focus on the ISIS stronghold of Raqqa in Syria and Ramadi the capital of Iraq's Anbel province held by ICU forces since May. And now to sport. And now in the world of sports, the Nigerian on the 17 team, Golden Eaglet, is set to take up Australia in the ongoing FIFA on the 17 World Cup in Chile. The Nigerian team for the round of 16 by emerging as Group A winners in a zone that had hosted Chile, USA and Croatia, while Australia qualified from Group C. The match will be played very early on Thursday morning by 12 a.m. Nigerian time at the Stadio Soleto Vindelma Stadium. 
The World Football Governing Body, FIFA, has confirmed seven candidates for next February Extraordinary Congress, which is expected to produce a successor to Imbato Sablata. The candidates are the General Secretary of Europe's Soccer Governing Body, UEFA, Gani Ifatino, uh, Barina Royal Family Member, Sheikh Salam bin Ibrahim Al Kafali, Head of Liberian Football Association. Mosa Biliti, others are UEFA President um, Michel Platini, Prince Ali bin Al Hussein of Jordan, South African businessman Tokyo Sexwale, and ex FIFA official Jerome Campaign. The football's world governing body, however, excluded former Trinidad and Tobago international David Nakit from the race, but no reason was given for its decision. And before we go tonight, here is a quick reminder of our top stories. President Mohammed Buhari assures Nigerians in India of government's total war against corruption. National Assembly to probe aviation contract as 64 billion Nara Abuja Airport runway comes under scrutiny. And finally, Nigeria make final push against Boko Haram rescues 338 hostages. On behalf of the entire news crew, thank you so very much for joining us tonight. My name is Omotayo Alo. Have a good night rest. <music>